Welcome to a Wicked Turtle Network exclusive. What is up, Wicked Turtle Nation? We just wanted to let you guys know that Wicked Turtle Network has decided to join the Ray's Rebellion as brand ambassadors for Ray's Energy Drink. Ray's Energy gives you fresh, and that stands for focus, recovery, energy, stamina, and hydration. With zero sugar, absolutely no crash, electrolytes, and BCAA aminos. I encourage everyone listening or watching right now to raise up and join the Raise Rebellion yourself by going to your local GNC, vitamin shop, or even online at repsports.com. And order yourself some Raise Energy drinks or other athletic supplements in bulk. And when checking out, use the order code Wicked Turtle for a 15% discount. The website and order code will be in the description of this cap. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Duke's Dive. I'm the Duke, and uh, if you uh, caught up with us last week, you know that we brought the, the coach on board to uh, um, to be a co-host with us with on the dive, basically. Um, I know you were had a pretty busy week, coach. Some stuff you got going on with the the Exer guys and Kit, and uh, you want to oh, yeah. you want to you want to go over a little bit of that with us. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I was in um, Hazleton, Pennsylvania for uh, ACWA, which um, mostly is a yearly thing. They don't run too often, but um, it right, went right. really well. Uh, Kit had a great match with um, Aaron Roxas that was fantastic. Uh, nice, nice. You know, that was uh, probably the match of the night. And um, yeah. the Exer guy, they, uh, they went up against... Um, uh, Ricky Price and MJ Stacks, who are students out of uh, Backbreakers Training Center. So that yeah. was a that was a fun one, just because Mike Mitchell M3 and I are, you know, heavily involved at Backbreakers. So it was a nice thing to be with the students. And um, you know, that one it went well. I mean, they're those two those two kids are they're great. But they're still new, so there was like a few yeah. hiccups here. I mean, overall, it was a fun sounds match. Like, sounds cool. Yeah. Um... Kind of reminds me of the the match going up next weekend for Northern Tier Wrestling. I don't know if you're for you're caught up with that. Uh, I'll be going to that with uh, Smart Mark Alley. Uh, and um, yeah, um, I think it's uh, Mike it's, and um. It's yeah, I think it's. Oh yeah, yeah. Excuse me, not Johnny. Yeah, Johnny's going to be there. I think it's going to be yeah. Johnny and uh, but it's going to be Mike and um, isn't it? Roxas. Yeah, Roxas against uh, Johnny and Rush, I believe. I think it is, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, my dogs are going crazy in the background. That's okay. But, uh, I have no it's clue right. what's going on here. But um, but yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be a, a benefit show for the Tilbury Hall there on uh, the March 5th up there in Nanticoke. Should be a good time. So, yep, uh, Ricky Martinez versus uh, Rob Sweet, I think, is going to be the heavyweight title match if i'm not mistaken there that'll be a fun one. Oh yeah and um uh axel lennox versus harzang <laughs> so that should be pretty good too yeah that'll be good and um i believe uh eric penhat and brad demail are on that show oh, yeah, too yeah so they're gonna be there for sure there's there's gonna be like a lot of scranton guys up there because it's like right up oh, yeah. right up there huh like nana yeah is, like right up there close to y'all so. Yeah, I, it'll be a good one. I like um, the NTW guys and the stuff they do. I like them. I yeah. unfortunately never works out. Plus, like Kit's usually got previous commitments, so I just never. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think I've done to, like. To pin down. Yeah, I think I've done like two things in the past with them um, with uh, right. Carver and, and stuff. And uh, yeah, oh, I remember the Boyman Sports Show. That was pretty. Fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, they put on um they they put on good shows, so that'll be a fun one. 
Yeah, I, I, I can't wait till, the, till they get back to Williamsport. But uh, the closest they'll be here is I think it's going to be in June. Excuse me. June or July, it's going to be at the Lycoming County Fair, so the fairground. Oh, nice. so, but, yeah, that should be pretty fun. Um, I think they were teasing the Rock and Roll Express. So maybe uh, cool. um, Johnny and Heather will finally get their marquee. Oh, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So that'd be the, pretty uh, sweet, hopefully. Hopefully somebody does that this year. I'd really like for them to get that match. Yeah, that'd but, be cool. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, I mean, aside from our weekly stuff, you know, we wanted to speak a little bit about Cesaro, who's going to be leaving the WWE and, um, you know, not to like be different from anybody else or whatever, you know, but I wanted to just celebrate his time. Like, I mean, you could probably make an argument to say that he was, he could have been champion. Like, what? Right. What? And people would say, like, he was misused, but, like, in what way? Like, he was on TV for 10 years, over 10 yeah, he years. He was, a, he was an intercontinental champion, a United States champion, a tag team champion. Was he a Grand Slam? He wasn't, was he? No, because he never won the main. He never won the um, right, right. The, the heavyweight belt, either one of them. So, right. um, Do you need but, I mean, to? Like, does that define a run? Like, I mean, for a Grand Slam, it does, but, like... Right, right. I think, like in the grand scheme, like you know what I mean. Like, no, absolutely ever... not. I mean, I don't think so. Roddy Piper never won a heavyweight championship. Yeah, that, um, yeah. Like, so like a lot of Kirk people Henry say does. that like, well, he was misused because he wasn't the, the main champion. Like, I don't necessarily believe that. Like, the, the, you, there's mem- moments you can go back to with Cesaro or Antonio Cesaro, whatever you want to call him. You know what I mean? And Claudio Castagnoli. You know, you go back yeah. to, and we will hear. In a couple of seconds, here go. To, you know, I have a couple of matches. I don't know if you wrote any down or, but um, mm-hmm. I've got a, I've got a few here. But um, yeah, I mean, you can go back to, you know, like the 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 Cesaro swing, the Cesaro section. You know, I, yeah, I yeah. just think like he had a pretty decent run. Like, and now he, he's going to go on to do whatever, whatever else. You know, is he going to go back to the old same old tag team? Or is he going to do stuff with um, Hero? Who knows. Yeah, I mean, who knows what's next? There's always a chance too that I mean, him and WWE could work it out. I mean, he could. Yeah, that like, too. They could. They could. Because I was thinking, it reminded me of. Um, I mean, it hasn't happened like with him resigning yet, but something like this happened similar with Drew Gulak a couple of years ago, where his yeah. deal went off and he was gone for like two weeks, and then they resigned him. Like, so I mean, or, anything um, could happen. What's his name? It's, it's good Spuds McKenzie, um, Drake Maverick. Yes, Drake was another yeah, one too. And Drake's back like, again. Go. Yeah, so you never know. Um, yeah, we'll see. But either yeah. way, if he doesn't come back, I mean, ten years is a great run. Absolutely. Be like, they, there's a lot of like, people who don't get that much, you know. Like no, what was it like thirteen years he was on TV? Yeah, and to be like in the mix for that entire time when like guys like kind of come and go, and some guys don't even make it like two years and you know, WWE. Yeah, like, so that's a, it's a really great run. Yeah. And uh, like I said, whatever he chooses to do next, like if he does stay with WWE, I wouldn't mind seeing him on NXT UK. Really? I think that'd be, that would be a fresh change of pace for him. Could you imagine him on there with some of them guys like either dragging off? I think, I think oh, that'd, be sweet. Like, that'd be, that'd be nuts. And to see him hold the United, you know, the UK title, does do you think that would mean, like, do you think that'd be better for him to hold a title like that as opposed to like the the main? Yeah, you know, I don't really know if he needs the the main title, like no. the main. So, but yeah, I mean, just to go to go off of a few matches here, you know, I'll throw in whatever when, whenever you want. Um, I'm gonna yeah. start it off with his debut. Um, he debuted in. Most of these matches here you can watch either on YouTube or on Peacock. Uh, most of them are on YouTube. Now yeah. this one here, um, the Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler in FCW. He debuted against him in 2012. Oh like, gosh, yeah, a while yeah. ago. When I, yeah, when I started watching, like I knew very little about the independent scenes, and then um, it was Bray Wyatt who got me. It was uh, the Anger Grandpa's son. And he was like, there's this guy, he's wrestling for FCW, and he's cutting these really awesome promos. And, like, there's talks that he could be coming up to WWE. So, you know, I get on the YouTube machine and I look up, you know, his promos from when he had the old uh, 
Hawaiian shirt on and the hat. And it's like, it, that's what like led me into back into wrestling, like this FCW stuff. So yeah, his, his stuff there was great. Um, and I know that it was something that you had mentioned uh, when we spoke was um, his stuff with Sami Zayn and NXT. His, yes. uh, two out of th- his two out of three falls matches there. That that's yeah. that was oh my god that yeah in the beginning Him of and NXT. Sammy, um, yeah they had that match on um, Takeover Arrival which was the first uh, NXT pay per view um, on the yeah. network which uh, 2014 I believe it was February I'm not sure I do believe I'm not sure if I have that one down but yeah that does that sound was, familiar that one was really great um, I remember when he had debuted in the WWE and he was brought in on SmackDown. And I remember they brought him in with, and the gimmick was that he was a rugby player who had gotten yes. like kicked out for like being too like violent in rugby. And he had um, Oksana with him, which like back in the, that point, like me and my significant other had so much fun just doing the like Antonio is my lover bit that oh like God, Oksana yeah. used to do before every match. Like, that was fun. It was so ridiculous, but fun. And he he did a great job, like, with yeah, and the character. That feels like and him. forever ago, don't it? Like, yeah. And, I mean, him and Oksana had, like, good chemistry together for oh, a brief yeah. time. Like, they had them together before they cut her. But, like, you know, that showed that he could, like, play a character, which I think also helped him in WWE because that's such a big part of their way of doing business. Oh, so. for sure. And, like, even... His stuff there we with, go. uh, there, yeah, exactly. There's this Ghana, yeah, that was awesome, man, yeah. And he, even his stuff with, um, Hager when they did the, um, stuff with, um, oh, oh my right. God, I'm Zeb yeah, Coulter. Zeb Coulter, yeah, that stuff. But yeah, my next one up here would be, uh, Cesaro versus R Truth for the U.S. title in, uh, the TLC match in 2012. That was a good one too, and not all these there were ones that he won, but you know, like just major memorable matches that Cesaro's had, in my opinion. Um, right, the stuff, that, the stuff that you can go back on and watch. Um, Cesaro versus Roman Reigns for the IC title in 2017. Yes, that was, that was amazing. Yeah, his um, his recent match with Roman Reigns from um, I'm blanking right uh, there now. We oh, there we go. The, uh, a, that Coulter was a there. that was a great gimmick that like came at like the perfect time because that was like kind of a thing that was happening with the uh that type of you know people with those kind of political ideas were kind of political yeah the political climate that that was going on at that point in time it was it was a risk but yeah i mean yeah wwe like sometimes they like hit it with pop culture and they get it right and that was one of the times i i wish they didn't kind of i think they got a little nervous with the attention and they kind of pull away a little on it but like yeah i think if they would have leaned heavier into that that could have gone places because that, that was um there were some oh, good yeah. problems that came oh, out man. of that there's nobody like that was watching wrestling at that time that would admit that they, they didn't you know every proud american stand on your yeah. feet place your hand on your heart you know we the people that was cool like i wasn't oh, you know, i'm not big on america at you know or whatever like a patriotism <laughs> yeah. and stuff but that was cool. Like, if you can get me to do that, like, yeah, yeah you're, you, you've, you've done your job. Uh, the music they had was a real oh banger God, yeah. too. Like, that music was great. As, as opposed to the, the bar, unfortunately, because then it was just oh the. God. Yeah, that's the, the, as opposed to the bar, because I mean, the bar was awesome, but it was just like, um. Cesaro's music mixed with Sheamus's, and Cesaro's yeah. music itself wasn't bad, but the sirens can go. The, the, the sirens oh, part of his yeah. music. His, yeah, um, the part. He's had a lot. By the way, like he had, I think he changed. He was one of those guys, like which where it happens every once in a while. Their music changes so much. I lost track of how many themes Cesaro had. Like he had. Yeah, he had, he's had quite a few. He's had the one where like the the the, the rapping in the beginning, like when he first came yeah. out, but that was pretty good. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, to move right on here is uh, Cesaro versus Cassius Ono in uh, FCW from 2012. That was a really good one, too. Excuse me. And, um, you know, uh, going back to his stuff, excuse me, with Cassius or Chris Hero, you know, whatever you'd like to call him as uh, Kings of Wrestling and stuff. So it was cool to see them, you know, in their 
the developmental developmental of developmental FCW way back in the day wrestle each other. Um, the next one I have is Cesaro versus Sheamus from, uh, excuse me, Raw from 2014. I'm setting also on there, but I'm I'm sorry. I got the the hand thing. My handwriting is atrocious. I had some notes saved on the computer and it didn't save. So yeah, we're here with the the old uh, terrible handwriting. Um, I was yeah. a... go, ahead. go ahead. I was no, going to no, say I was I... a really uh, big fan of his uh, run with um, Tyson Kidd, where they were a tag team. Oh too, my god! Or... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They had some really great matches. I, thought, that came yeah, out I really that. thought that would have went went more because it was like right around that time where like uh, like DIY was getting teased that like yep. Tyson went back on the shelf and was like, man, could you imagine if like those guys wrestled DIY in NXT? So, like that would amazing. Yeah, but, there, um, there were some good matches that we never, unfortunately, because of Tyson Kidd getting the injury and having to retire. We never really got like to see some of the like good matches. Like, I mean, they may I don't remember every match they had, and I'm sure they wrestled like the Usos at one point, but like those were like the yeah. Usos then compared to now, like the Usos are so so freaking good now. What oh my god, yeah. see, like, them against like the more kind of modern experienced Usos. Like there was some good stuff that For sure. We never got to see with those guys. Yeah. And maybe Tyson, you know, Maybe he'll come back at some point. Maybe not, or maybe he'll go somewhere else down the line if he if he I, can come back. You know, I mean, it's possible. Look at how many yeah. people have come back yeah. from retirement. So. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, my next one on here. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find on the Peacock machine, but if you can't, um, I had found it through a uh, Daily Motion video. You can Google it. it. Was Cesaro versus William Regal from NXT Rewind 2015. That was a really we- that was a really good one, and um, yeah, I think it was one. right around that time where Regal was um, doing his last run. So he had a couple of different good matches with um, some of the guys who are top, top, top right now. Like I think he'd had a match with um, I think even Rollins in FCW yeah. back then. So that was that's that was just really awesome. My next one was Cesaro versus John Cena for the USA Open from Raw 2015. Yeah, that just that whole USA Open Challenge stuff was pretty good from John Cena. Oh yeah, we he Cena like we... right there. Yeah, he, like he was wrestling Kevin Owens. He was wrestling um, CM yeah. Punk at that time. That it was just a, a fire run. Like right? it was really fun yep. stuff. Yeah, wrestled um, Sami Zayn. Um, that yeah. was a uh, Sami debut. Yes. And Sammy messed his shoulder up. Um, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, just lots of good stuff on that whole run. Yeah. Um, the next one up here is Cesaro versus Daniel Bryan from Raw. Uh, it was uh, August 23rd, 2013. January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, no, excuse me. July 23rd, 2013. Excuse me. And then the last one we have is Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler from SmackDown. January 31st, 2014. It was, he had a really bunch of really good matches with Cesaro. I mean, excuse me, yeah, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Um, Dolph I mean, is just that good, man. Like, oh, Dolph is great. I am, you know, I mean, we'll get into it a little bit when we uh, we get to uh, 2.0, but yeah. like Dolph is, uh, Dolph is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that wraps it up for uh, our coverage of Cesaro. Um, like I said, just to keep it different, you know what I mean? I know there's a lot of people right now who are going to be saying, you know, he 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 deserved more. Could have had more. You know, I understand that, but I just wanted to, you know, go and talk a couple minutes and, um, you know, be thankful for the ten years of time that we got to see him on TV. Like that's a lot of time, and uh, not a lot of people get that much time. And to be on TV for that amount of time, I think is commendable. So yes, thank you, Cesaro, for your time there, and uh, I I enjoyed that. So. Yeah, same. He had a great run, and um, I mean, whatever he does next, I'm excited to see. Absolutely, whatever. So, yeah, um, that 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 will cover up the Cesaro part, the Cesaro section, if you will. The Cesaro and, section. Um, yep. We'll move on to the rest of our weekly stuff here. Um, we keep Raw on a uh, periodical 
if something good happens, like last week was a really good episode. This week wasn't so, so much. Um, this week for me, um, Bianca Belair versus Dewdrop was a good one. Oh, and, phenomenal. Um, yeah. And KO versus Rollins. Um, KO and Rollins defeating RK Bro for me. Yeah. That was the two ones I'd have mentioned. Um, for me, for Raw. I don't know if you had anything else for Raw. No, I think um, I would say just, I mean, Dewdrop and Bianca is definitely yeah. worth tracking down and watching. Uh, yeah, even if you otherwise. watch NXT level up, not to jump into that, but um, like right in the middle there, they, they showed that match. So that right, yeah. either you can go absolutely watch that right there, too. Um, Without having to watch Raw, there's plenty of ways to yeah. watch it. I mean, yeah, that the was highlights were there. definitely the highlight of Raw. Raw this week was. Um, it was, I mean... A lot it was, of build-up. Yeah. I felt like there was just a lot of, um, like, a lot of build-up and a lot of just nothing, nothing yeah. major kind of happening. So, like, you know, I... We don't really don't cover... Much... Yeah, sorry about that. We don't really cover, the like, the promo stuff too heavily, yeah. you know what I mean? So, it was, it felt like it was promo heavy and, you know, like, uh, live promo heavy. Like, um, they had the, the, yeah. the contract signed between Brock and... Was, now that was SmackDown, wasn't it? That was on SmackDown with Brock and Roman. SmackDown was uh, very angle heavy this week too, but there was mm-hmm. like a thing or two on SmackDown that I enjoyed. Yeah. So, um, but like as for Raw, I would uh, I mean, if if you didn't watch Raw yet and like you're gonna like catch up on some Raws, you could probably skip the one from. You know, right? Monday, uh, the 21st. you could watch it like an like an abridged twenty minute, even if you even yeah. if that like on YouTube. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways. And then Raw themselves, WWE themselves, put up Raw highlights. So yeah. just find out, up yeah, just find out the stuff that you trips your trigger and go watch that for sure. Um, we're gonna move right on to NXT NXT 2.0 for our Tuesday of the week. Uh, we open we uh, started it off with um. Grayson Waller defeating LA Knight. This was an up for me. This was. A, did, oh, he yeah. defe- did he did defeat him right? Because. Yeah, yeah, he won. Yeah. Um, yeah, he won the match. Um, this was an up for me too. I, uh, I mean, LA Knight's great. Um, great on the mic, looked good. Uh, yeah, I, I love Grayson Waller in terms of like somebody like that. Like I enjoy like seeing like the dude is um great at getting like. You know, he like he he looks yeah. good. He, everything he does like looks smooth. Like I'm a big I'm a big fan of his. Um, so I enjoyed this one a lot. Yeah, I used to draw a lot of comparisons to him and um theory. Also yeah. theory, and yeah, they were kind, kind of like of... right that right there at the same time. And um, theory got and got that look, and now he's on the. But I could see him. I could see Waller getting that same call up anytime. Yeah, Waller. Um, Reminds me of a like not wrestling wise because they're kind of different, but like style. Like he reminds me of the Miz a little bit too in terms yeah. of like, um, he just has, has yeah, that ability. Yeah, like presence. yeah, he's got a great charisma and presence. And he has that ability to play like an, just like an asshole, like the dude you want to like punch in the mouth. Like yeah, uh, for sure. And um, the bodyguard they put with them that's been working out pretty well too. Um, oh yeah, yeah, uh, Sangu. Who at one point was, I believe, tag team partners with Veer, who at some point shall arrive on Raw. <laughs> and, uh, at some point he will, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope, I, I'm like, I was joking with, I was talking to my buddy, and I'm curious to, to see who makes it to Raw first, Cody Rhodes or Veer. So we'll see with yeah. that. But, uh, um, exactly. But yeah, I give a thumbs up to Waller and uh, LA Knight and the angle, the angle in general, I give a thumbs up to. It's been great. Yeah, that was fun. And uh, we move on to uh, Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray defeating um, Lash Legend and Amari Miller. That was a, that was a up for me. This was the yeah. uh, beginning of the uh, Women's Dusty Cup, right? Yes, this is uh, the first round of the um, opening mat, the opening of the tournament. Uh, Seems like uh, yeah. NXT and UK are doing their um, tag team, their, their, their tag team stuff of the year. Yeah. Right now. Um, I mean, NXT, both NXTs, like UK and 2.0, have, like, really great tag divisions and a great emphasis on tag wrestling, which is something in the WWE that's uh, unusual. So that's been cool. Um, yeah, this was a thumbs up for me. My um, 
it was one of those deals where like they kept it short because Lash and Amari, I believe, are relatively new, so you didn't want to like yeah. you know, do anything that would expose, you know, their lack of like expertise. I mean Kaylee Ray is Correct. fantastic yeah. and so is Io Shirai. Oh yeah. Um, so I mean it was a good start to the tournament. They uh they picked up a pretty good win, so that was a it's an up for me on that one. Yeah, it's a fun tag team match. Yeah. And uh, then we had Duke Hudson defeating Dante Shen. Um, just this was kind of like a neutral for me. I'm not really too too familiar with any of the with any of these guys. Um, getting to know Duke a lot more since the beginning of 2.0, but um, it wasn't a down though. But it wasn't a good. No. It wasn't a bad match at all. It's just no. um, I'm ready to see it, more. Yeah. Yeah, it existed. Um, Dante Shen is relatively new to the 2.0 yeah. show i don't i know like he was on the debut episode he had a uh death in his family and then he had taken time off oh, that's terrible come, yeah yeah and they put him with uh duke and um i mean i like i think duke cuts and has a lot of potential but they just need to kind of find something that works for duke like he had a poker player gimmick that um, isn't this the guy that um got his head shaved yeah yeah yeah, okay, and like, okay. he had started on 2.0 with a poker player gimmick. I don't mm -hmm. think it was, like, connecting the way they want it to. So now they're kind of trying more of the, like, arrogant, like, heel, like, dickhead, power heel kind of deal with him. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just trying to find his voice. He's got he's got a good look. He does some cool power moves. You know, he was, he was actually on Monday Night Raw for a bit during uh, COVID. It was him and... Um, oh, nice, yeah. Shane Thorne had a few tag matches on Raw. That, oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Then Retribution happened, and Duke went back to NXT, and Shane became Slapjack. But, like... Yeah, um, I, I don't know if that's still going on. I've seen a couple of oh, right. promos. Yeah, like, with Duke, though, like, Duke is, uh... There's potential, but, yeah, I would give it in the middle. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It just... It was a match on, on the show. It was filler, you know? Right, right. And, and there's, it served its purpose, for sure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the next one up was Cameron Grimes defeating Trick Williams. Now, this this was an up for me. I do like Cameron. Yeah, yeah I, I liked it. Cameron, Cameron's great. Um, it was good. It was continued the story with him and Carmelo. So, you know, it did what yeah, it needed absolutely. to do. Yeah, and then hopefully that he gets to um, challenge for that uh, North American at some point here. Yeah. Cameron Grimes again. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely an up for me. And then the next one up was the debuting Nikita Lyons defeating Kayla Inlay. It was a really short one, but it was a good one. It was definitely yeah. an up. Yeah. This, it was, it this was, was really an up quick one. This was the one the uh, the internet kind of lost their mind over a little. I think, they uh, did. Everybody, everybody fell in love with Nikita at once on uh, Twitter. I hopped on, and I think every other post right. was that picture yeah. of uh, that pin, which, you know, probably, look yeah. at them, people. You know, like. Um, I've seen uh, a few things with Nikita because she was on 205 Live a couple times in the past oh, few yeah. months. And, uh, so you know, the like, name does sound familiar. I know that I've heard yeah. it at least. If you like, you kind of like hop on Hulu or wherever you watch 205 Live. You know, you can kind of like go back and see a few of her matches. Um, if you look yep. good, um, the kicks. You know, kick looked great. Uh, the finisher. The finisher was the finisher with the uh, the split pin there. That was um yeah, that was it. You know she's a uh, super. She's talented. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I think uh, I think they can it's do do a lot with her. Like yeah, that I mean the the finisher is definitely like a flashy, flashy like looky yeah. looky here kind of thing for sure. Like and I, she did well, so yeah. And I think um there's a lot of star potential. Plus like. You know, she has like a different look to her, which like, you know, a lot of times with WWE in particular, the females tend to look, you know, similar because they have right things they like. And um, it's nice now, especially you see more on NXT. They're kind of getting um, different types of women, giving different ones a chance. Yeah, so I think it's all different cool. kind of body size and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's great. That's, you I know, think what wrestling could be like all a about. Real, you know a real uh, opponent for Raquel, Man Raquel Gonzalez. Too. Yes, I think her and Raquel can have a 
you know, like a very, you know, powerful, strong women kind of feud. Yeah, like it'll be absolutely. It'll be fun. But yeah, her match was a big up. That was uh that's how you do a debut correctly. Like you let her show yeah, off what sure. she do best, you know, and there you go. Short, sweet, and to the point. Yep. And then we had a, the another women's tag team match. We had Casey Cotton Zero and uh, Caden Carter defeating uh, the Diamond Mine. It was um, Ivy Niles and um, I'm not. Was it Peraza? Peraza Peraza. No, I, I cannot remember I, the name. And yeah, I, you know. this happened last week, but I'm not sure exactly. We'll we'll have to remember that next week if. She, we're referring to the diamond mine because she did get the snot beat out of her by Ivy at the yeah. match. I mean, anyone who's watching this who's a fan of that worker, I apologize for not remembering her name. But um, uh, yeah, did, I, I'm sorry. If I do apologize there. But she did well. Uh, I mean, you know, she got she kind of got booted out. Uh, she was in the, she was in the diamond mine for a whole night. She was in there with Ivy. Uh, right. She got booted out. I, I imagine that'll lead to like maybe like a short little angle with Ivy and the. That yeah, particular... maybe we'll see her on NXT level up next week and yeah. so good, good, good when we'll have no problem yeah. remembering her name after that. This one was um this Sparks one I just kind something, of wasn't yeah. It? yeah, Kayla Sparks, maybe. I think that might be it. Yeah, it's either Kayla or Kaya, K Kayla. It started with a K. Either way, she was she was talented, she did super well, she looked good. Um this match was in the middle for me. Like it's you know, I I think um with Yeah. It, it was fine. Like it was the wrestling and it was, was like enjoyable, but it wasn't anything that like, I would like say, like go out of your way to watch. If you happen to catch right. it, it's, you won't be upset, but like, it's also not like go and watch this right now. It was, another it was one that served as purpose. Um, this yeah. was another first round match for the women's dusty cup. I do believe unless I'm mistaken. Yeah. This was in the first. Yeah. The next so yeah, it was, yeah, it was another first round match to, to get the, um, Excuse me, Casey Cotton Zero and uh, Caden Carter into the yeah. into the uh, actual tournament. But yeah, after that was the main event, and um, you know, last like I said, we were going to get into was Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler defeated with some Tom Foolery, Tommaso Ciampa. Yes, um, this was a great match. Uh, this one is worth a watch, and it's so funny because I feel like um, oh, oh my gosh, I. Completely forgot. Yeah, I, yeah. you know, uh, Finn Balor and Tommaso Ciampa teamed up on Raw. So yeah, yeah. yeah that was a that uh, was a good one too. I, that I was great. Uh, that. that slipped my mind. The same, and that was um, Ciampa having like a match on Raw, which was cool. Um, but yeah. yeah, this was good, and it's funny because I've kind of seen the narrative becoming that like Dolph Ziggler was is overrated, or Dolph Ziggler isn't as good as like people say he is, and it's like that's that's not true. I mean, watch. Watch his matches, but like, you know, it's not yeah. Dolph Ziggler's fault that like he's, you know, he does the role that he's told to do, and that doesn't always work to the point where he can put on like bangers because he has a job that he has to do. What like right? He has is that given run. Him. He had that run in like was it like twenty fourteen fifteen with the I yeah. IC title, and um, that's when I started really, f you know, getting interest in him. But I. I couldn't have sworn it was a, a a house show in State College, and he. I swear to God, I I could be wrong. You'd have to ask Kevin, um, Kevin Coke from Smart Mark Alley. But um, I I swear he wrestled the Miz in a regular ass match, and it was like a, a a half hour match, and it was just like, oh my God, that was freaking amazing. Why was that not on TV? And it, I, it was like the following week. So if you yeah. remember that, like I could have sworn, like that we we'd seen that on the dark, like the week before, and it was just like, wow, dude, that was like a, like they they wrestled for like a half hour, and then they did like pretty much the same thing like the next week, and it was like we seen that, that was so cool to see live, and it was like that's the Dolph Ziggler I want to see all the time, man. Like that's yeah, what I like think. even like. like he's um he's never had like any bad matches like i don't know i feel like i don't think no now yeah i think because people have been like praising him there's people that you know have to come out of the woodwork to be like well no like he's not that good or no he's right right crazy like no, I he said, deserved he, to be in there yeah yeah you can't judge like ziggler off of um 
what he's been doing because again he's in a role him and bobby Roode, they have a particular role on raw they have to serve said yeah. role like it is what it is but like him and champa was great uh this week yeah. coming and bobby Roode, um, bobby Roode was yeah. the one who, i'm sorry to yes. over yet. bobby Roode was the reason that he had won because he was the uh hidden cameraman he was one yes. of the cameramen it could find out but uh but yeah they they they, they serve their role on raw and um could we see more of those guys on Raw? I mean, excuse me, on NXT? I sure hope so. Um, you know, uh, Rude did spend some time in NXT. He was the NXT the, uh, champion. Yeah. The main event for uh, 2.0 this week is uh, Braun and Ciampa against Bobby Rude and Dolph Ziggler. So that'll Good. be... Good. Uh, so, yes. You know, yeah. Well, that was overall a uh, thumbs up on 2.0. I liked it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that Definitely a thumbs up. And um, let's move on to... Uh, Wednesday was AEW Dynamite. Um, I'm not sure if you did watch, but uh, our guy um, Mint Mike was on there again, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, that was the only segment I saw. Oh, I saw the two segments, the one with Mint Mike Mitchell and the one with yeah. John Redbeard. Everything else, I have no idea. So you can kind of review review yeah, Dynamite, yeah. you know? It's all good. Um, they opened it up with uh, Kings of Black Throne defeating Pac and Penta Oscura. Uh, now this was uh, Penta's um, Lucha character. Uh, they did pick up the win because, um, excuse me, Penta um, kind of stopped the mist from Pac. He kind of like put his hand over and made him swallow it, and then pinned him for the one, two, three. But at the end, there um, we see the House of Black got a new member in Buddy Murphy, and. Um, I think that's it's pretty good long term storytelling between promotions there. You know, I mean, when um, Buddy Murphy took out the eye of Aleister Black back in WWE, so you know, yeah. just because it was uh, you know a place that they don't work anymore, they they continue this storyline going forward, and I, f- I I find that you know what I mean pretty interesting. So so kudos to that, you know, just keeping that going forward and with it black and he's still got the, you know, the eye and the, 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 the yeah. diamonds around the eye and he's still keeping that going. It, I think that's yeah, really I mean, neat. And I like, um, I think black and Murphy are, they're talented. They're, oh my gosh. They'll, they'll yeah. do good stuff with that for the AEW fans will definitely get some good stuff out of that. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was cool. Like, um, there was two different segments where people had beaten down some security guards. This one was a cool one with um, Brody King had smashed like, oh my god, five or six security guards yeah. like just steamrolled them. But, yeah, that was my uh, my buddy John Redbeard uh, from the X guys was one of them. Oh nice. Yeah, security, yeah he was one of those security guards who got popped by Brody King. So that was a. Uh, well, hopefully that was they fun. didn't wrestle on uh, dark and I missed it because I decided not to cover you know get the hand. I didn't they, cover Dark or Dark Elevation this week. They did not get a match, unfortunately, but they not, did not both get to appear on Dynamite. So, hey, that's know, a win. That's cool. cool. Yeah. That's cool. Still so, a win for my boys, so I count it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The next one up here is Ricky Starts defeating Ten. Um, this one wasn't up for me, but I, I would have liked to see Ten win. It seems like he gets a lot of wins on Dark and Dark Elevation. It's just like a lot of um, people in that situation. It's like, you know, it's it's very predictable, Dark and Dark Elevation. I was going to say this yeah. last week, and it's just like... And I understand the point of Dark and Dark Elevation. Don't get me wrong, but when you go into it every week knowing like the unknown like is going to come in and lose to the person who has a little bit of known known yeah. or you know what I mean notoriety to their name sometimes they 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 uh they flip the script like um uh one of the uh, unknowns beat serpentico like last week or something like that and um that's a very rare occasion that like the 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 unknown name would make but like isn't that the point of it to like to make yeah. these na- unknown, rather unknown names? You know, what I mean, have more, but it seems to be more like to get the the um the regulars some wins, like, and that's not bad. You know what I mean? But it's just very predictable, very very predictable. Yeah, I think dark and um elevation kind of serve the purpose that like WWF superstars used to serve back in the day, where you would yes. have like. Yes. The big name versus the unknown. And it was basically to allow the big name 
or the the name in the case of some of the people on dark and elevation to kind of just showcase what they can do so that people can kind of get familiar. So, I mean, it is formulaic at times, but like it does at least give them a chance to give people a taste of what they, they can kind of do in the room, which is cool. Maybe they did, you know, add, add a little bit of fan engagement and yeah, because since, since they're on yeah. YouTube or like maybe do like a poll or something like add some kind of way like the fans can interact and say, hey, we want to see this, you know, name that we don't usually see. We want to see them back on Elevation, Dark Elevation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the these are guys we want to see back for sure. So maybe like down the line that you'd have some more fan interaction that way, like. Who out of the who out of the unknowns this week was, you know, the fan favorite or something? I don't know, but that that might be yeah. a whole different uh, whole different can of worms, wouldn't it? It might, it might. That could be uh, that could go either really well or could turn into oh, a, yeah, a so it could, could, could turn you know? into a shit show. I could imagine with, that. With wrestling fans, it could go either great or it could turn into everybody just telling everyone else to like, you know eat shit so yeah, my, opinion anyway. is my opinion yeah yep. so yeah that that was that one ricky starks and 10 um and my little rant on uh tangent on dark and dark elevation we move on to the main event was brian danielson versus daniel garcia uh defeating daniel garcia Th- this yeah this i've been waiting to see this since i've been seeing daniel garcia with uh gcw and promotions like that like I, I've been waiting to see him take on a guy like Brian Dan Daniel Bryan. Oh my God! Yeah, excuse me. So that that was a really good one. Yeah, and, and I, it's um, leading. Pardon, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say again, I didn't see it, but like I assume with uh, I think Daniel Garcia. I've seen a little bit of his stuff here and there, and he's talented. And obviously, we all know what Brian can do. So yeah, I, I don't have to see it to know that it was like probably pretty great. So. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, it's it's definitely leading to um, it's definitely leading to Moxley taking on Brian at uh, Revolution. You know that he said that he can't stand side beside him and make a team with him until he bleeds with him. So yeah. eventually, they're probably going to be the uh, Papa of Daniel Garcia and Two Point Oh are going to have to, you know, child file yeah. child support or something. I don't know what the hell they're going <laughs> to have to do. They're yeah. Hopefully you see more of 2.0 after that too. Like, but yeah. I, I think they're really good too. And the stuff they were doing on NXT when they were there was was pretty top notch stuff too. Yeah, they were. Um, yeah, Ever Rise. They were. They were entertaining. Um, yeah. They unfortunately just you know they came along like right towards the end of the black and gold. Yeah. And I think like, they just the, given the their the, look. The, they yeah. just, I, which I think they look great, but obviously to the WWE, they didn't quite fit anymore with what yeah. their idea. They kind of have that super, in, they do kind of have that super indie look. Yeah. And I mean, and, uh, that one boy needs to do something with the, uh, the BTE title or give it up for it. Or what are you doing with that? Yeah. Or give it to give it to Renee. You know, you've been ducking her for, for months now. Give give Renee the, a a shot at the BTE the BTE title or or, or go away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all, all, you know, all together, Dynamite was definitely an up. Um, I wouldn't my show of the week by any means, but it it was definitely pretty good. And uh, next up, we have um, Impact, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get right into that. Yeah. The, we opened up with Matt Cardona defeating Jordan Jordan Grace for the um, digital media championship. This this was a down for me. Um, <laughs> it's it's cool to see Zach as uh, you know the 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 media champion, but I, I felt like that was kind of like tailor made for Jordan at that point in time. And he he was I mean, it was this this was a um, false count anywhere uh, hardcore match. So I. Uh... I didn't see it. Um, I, again, I don't like. There's so much wrestling on, and I'm there, so there's busy so something. much. So it's like not any slight on Impact at all when I say right. I didn't see it. But I mean, um, I do just think the current stuff that Cardona's doing overall is fantastic. Like yeah, he reinvented all, himself. All of, yes, he's kind of leaning into that whole like 
I know people are going to hate me because I was Zack Ryder. And I think like, it's been great. Like the shit that he's been doing. Yeah. I do like that. And, um, he's like a champion of like 10 different promotions right now. And he had Mm -hmm. like posted a picture this weekend of the, the like 10th, the, um, the umpteenth championship he won. And, um, (laughs) <laughs> Lance Storm had taken a swat at him. I don't know if you'd seen that. He says, you do know some promotions will pay you with money, right? <laughs> I thought that was that funny. Was, so. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Cause he, he's, yeah, he's like 10 different champions all at once now. Yeah, he's like I mean, the NWA he's champ. Some, yeah, I was going to say, I think that's the, only, that's the most important one. I mean, that's yeah, probably I, the well, one. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Not to downplay yeah. anybody else, but it's not to No, 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 no. I, I'm not saying that at all. No, I'm just right. saying the NWA it, one. Just, you know, yeah, you, that, that would seem to be the most prestigious out of them. Yeah, just sure. the lineage is all I meant. That just has such a history yeah, and all. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Um. So the yeah, I guess we move on to uh, Bupin Bu. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna but, butcher this name. It's Bupinder Gujar defeating uh, John Skyler. This was enough for me. They're building up Bu, uh, Pinder here. To uh, be a, a um, big force moving forward, he's going to be like a Morrissey. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, hopefully, then you wait down the line. Um, yeah, yeah, he he was he was cool to see. He's kind of like their uh, Veer or something. I, it would seem like. Except seem he actually made it. The... He arrived. <laughs> yeah. Veer's on a bus somewhere on his way to Raw. Maybe he'll make it someday. Maybe he'll make it to Impact before he make it to Raw. Yeah. I think Veer's going to end up like, you know, Veer's going to end up like on like, I think the joke will be like the draft will happen again or a trade and Veer's going to end up on SmackDown or NXT. Oh, like, yeah. I like could see that happen see for sure. You know? Like, didn't he wrestle with the, the, um, the Shane McMahon deal, the whole... Um, Oh my gosh, I forget what they were calling it, but it was like just as a. It kind of seemed like the ICW of WWE, the backstage like Fight Club. Stuff oh, oh, the, uh, the um, sorry, Raw yeah. Underground. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. No, maybe I don't remember. I know. Um, I just sworn I mean, he had like one match and he like dominated, and everyone was like, "Who is that dude?" Oh no, no, you're thinking of um, uh, Commander Aziz. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're right. Uh, yeah. Baba, Baba Dune Day or something was what he was going on under there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, cause he was like, he, cause that had ended and he was supposed to get like a big push on Raw and then they kind of repackaged him with, um, Apollo Crews. And I mean, he's still yeah. on TV. Really. It's not like he vanished, but like, it's just, right, they went right. in a different direction. Veer was with, um, Shanky and they were with Jinder Mahal for a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Like, yes, yes. Yeah, I remember that. had that run on either Raw or SmackDown. I really don't remember, but it was it was during the Thunderdome stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah. He was. Because yep. uh, Shanky is still with Jinder, and I believe they're on SmackDown. They have some tag matches occasionally, so. Yeah. So, um, we're, we're, we're dragging our my, – I'm dragging yeah. my feet here. So, let me get – clear this out but excuse me Deanna Perrazzo defeated Lady Frost this was a good one it keeps the Perrazzo in her you know I mean in the in the in the title picture the title hunt so this was an up for me um we then moved on to Jonah Jonah defeated Zicky Dice uh I do believe Zicky is um a free agent at this point he's another one who's uh could pop up anywhere so yeah he's a He's super talented. He, uh, him and Kit Raff were buddies. So I hope, uh, really? Zicky. Yeah. Yeah. They're friends. They're pals. They, That's uh, cool. work. Yeah, he seems like, he seems like a cool dude, Zicky. Yeah. Kit says, uh, Kit's spoken very highly of him. I hope, um, he lands somewhere, you know, or stays in impact or whatever he wants. But I mean, dude's super talented. So best of luck hey. to wherever he goes. Hey, he, if he's got the Kit Raff, a okay, he's cool by me. Yeah. And he eats, pizza, he eats pizza before his title matches. So. I can imagine, I can, uh, simply, you know what I mean? I can, yeah. well, they say, uh, connect with him over that. Yeah. <laughs> I probably eat pizza before my championship match, too. But, yeah, um, I mean, he'll be, I think he'll do, he'll do good stuff. Dude's talented, yeah. so. For sure. Um, yeah, and then in the main event, we had Honor No More taking on um, 
defeating Chris Saban, Rick, uh, yeah, Rich Swan, and Willie Mack. Um, that was a really good one too. Um, you know, honor no more. That they're, they're we had found out they're allowed to stay this, you know, in the impact, and um, eventually there's going to be some kind of war, but um, we're not at that point yet. But we're soon getting there. We've seen some turncoats from both sides. You know, uh, Eddie Edwards turned on Impact to join Honor No More. Excuse me. I seem to think there's going to be maybe one person on Ring of Honor side who might join at some point, and I think that might be Kenny King. He was a X division. I mean, he was an Impact World Heavyweights champion at what some point. Um, so you never know, you know. But all those yeah. Ring of Honor guys at that point had something to do with Impact at some point. Um, I'm 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 curious to see. I don't know if you've heard, but the rumor and innuendo is that Tony Khan is going to buy Ring of Honor. Really? That's, yeah, that's that's the rumor and innuendo on the internet. Um, so I'm curious if that does happen. What that could mean for like a lot if like Khan's going to run it on. Like, That'd be interesting. It. It, cer- it certainly keeps that door open between Khan and Impact. I hope my hope would be that he would keep running Ring of Honor, but there's also yeah. always the chance that he could just absorb it into AEW and like. And, and, and if they were to be able to do that, and uh, you know, um, keep that tape library, and like yeah. imagine like having it AEW content with everything Ring of Honor, that'd yeah. be sweet. Yeah, yeah and I, I mean, that would be, from, yeah. From like a business standpoint, that would be like why you would want to buy Ring of Honor because that tape library you've got like the original Decades. stuff of it. yeah and you've got like punk samoa joe uh aj styles there's um kenta stuff from ring of honor brian danielson like you can go down the list of like tyler black oh my god you yeah. have the list of like really good people who had like incredible runs and bangers in ring of honor so like that tape library would be worth the purchase alone and i mean yeah take man, back the, the history of a lot of the top guys are right there you yeah. know you yeah, stumble yeah. across this, Tony, Tony Khan. Take like Ring of Honor's library and take AEW's and put it on HBO Max, man. Come on, like you know. Yes, exactly. That'd be sweet, man. And that, oh my god, that that'd be perfect. That'd be the but, best thing ever. Yeah, it certainly would rival Peacock. Yeah, the only, that's the what only mean. way Peacock works perfectly is through my Xfinity box. Go figure. I mean, I have I have no issue with Peacock on just yeah. Like, I'll get, we'll like get back on top in a minute, but like. Um, Amazon Fire works great on. I've never had an issue other than yeah. the occasional bump spring, but like, I mean, Peacock itself is a, it's a shitty app, but that's a story for another time. Let's yeah. Back to it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, um, that impact was a good one. And, um, just to, you know, wrap things up here, we got our real quick ones here of the week. Uh, NXT UK, you know, I think that they, re- like I said last week, they really nailed down that one hour f- Time yep. frame, dude. And uh, we got Amale, um, Amale, is am I saying that right? Defeating Zaya Brookside. Yeah. Um, thumbs up on this one. I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, thumbs up. Good. Yeah, it was a good one. So, three of them. So, Ro, uh, Raja, what's the guy's name? Oh, my God. Rohan? Rohan Raja? Yeah, I mean, yeah that defeats, sounds right. Defeats Danny Jones. Um, Family D'Amelia or something like that. The the faction that Rohan is in. I'm really interested yeah. in that. And the one dude, um, um the curly haired dude, you know, oh yeah, he, uh, he he, he kind of reminds me of a Pete Dunn or like a Oh that's like a, that's uh that's William Regal's kid. I don't know if you knew that. Oh my god, yeah, that's why he looks yeah, I was gonna say yeah. like he looks so he familiar. Looks, like he looks like a blue. He looks like a, yeah, he looks like Steven Regal. If you go back and watch like old Steven yes. Regal from like early WCW. I mean, obviously, it's his son, but yeah, like he, uh, you know, and he even wears like he's got the blue tights and the red boots, and he does the like wipe his feet on the like outside thing. Oh like, my he gosh, that's the... great! Yeah, no, that's Regal's kid. I'm hoping I'd love for him to like get moved to 2.0 at some point, just because then you know we get we can get Braun and a uh, Regal's kid against each other, which would be a lot of fun. Oh my god, yeah, um, that too. And Charlie that awesome. Charlie Dempsey, I believe, is the name he works under. So Charlie Dempsey, yes, it is. Yep. Yes. But yeah, that wasn't up for me. And then the the, the yes. main event was Mustache Mountain taking on Ashton Smith and Oliver Carter. Oh yeah, big up on this one. This was great. Big up. This was wow. Yeah. Uh, Mustache Mountain. Awesome. Um, 
We're not like, going to do the, 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 the of the week stuff this week because we're running because we we, yeah. we spoke about um, Cesaro for for like forever. But yeah. But so, but it. if I had to give a tag team match of the week, dude, Mustache Mountain for sure. Yes. They're my tag team. Like, oh, they're wow, great. that was such a fantastic <laughs> match. <laughs> you know, I was um, I went to a Chikara show years ago, and uh, Trent Seven used me to like <laughs> you know oh, it's like sweet. it was such a fun. He like he well he hid he hid behind me to get outside to like take a break like it was the funniest That's shit really ever. Great. But um, that is great. I, and I chit chat it with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah, was. I'm sorry, you know, it yeah, went yeah. away. Dude, but like, he was great. He's a For great dude. Was, yeah, absolutely. Seven. Super nice dude. I'm glad he's having all the success. He was fun to talk to. You know. Yeah. So, but anyways, For sure. Uh, on, to, on to whatever. On to the next one. Yep. Um, SmackDown. We, this is only about four of them. So we got yep. Los Lutharios defeating Big E and Kofi. This was a down for me. Um, I, it, yeah. Just to see Big E and Kofi lose. And yeah. So see, like, Big E was just champion. And so, yeah, I thought they'd. I there's no. Doing. There's no direction to it. It's just it is. It's just continuous um, like matches with. Uh, and I mean, it's a shame because uh, Garza, Carrillo, Kofi, and Biggie are all super talented, but it just seems yeah. like it's filler and it's treading water, and it's just I don't know, it's not going anywhere. So yeah. thumbs down on that one for me too. Yep, thumbs down. Um, next up was Drew McIntyre. It was a rematch with uh, Madcap Moss. We, we you know we thought we were going to see him versus Happy, but um, yeah. I think they're going to save that for Mania. I really do. Yeah, I think so too. So um, it was still one up. Yeah, it was fine. It was good. Drew, Drew, Drew did well. Madcap's getting better, like in terms of like character and yeah. what he, you know. They so, talked about that, that 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 nasty um oh, yeah, spell the... he took at Elimination Chamber, and they even kind of um alluded into it in the match, if you know what I mean. Like they, they yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They kind of teased it. And he grabbed the ropes and went on the other the side. Um, kind of like when uh, AJ Styles did the, he fell off the top rope when he was trying for a phenomenal forum back in, uh, I think it was PWG and like they made a, um, they made a thing out of it. Like, yeah, he would like be afraid to do that phenomenal forearm like going forward. So it was pretty cool. Uh, That was definitely an up. And, um, the next one was, um, Zaya Lee versus defeating Natalia. This was a, this was a good one for me. Um, yeah, so um, I love that entrance from Zaya. Oh yeah, the entrance was great. The match was um, match was fun. Uh, yeah, fuck quick. the crowd. By the way, fuck the crowd. Um, crowd was yeah. obnoxious from this match. Um, yeah. you know, if any of the fans, because like in Pennsylvania, see this, and you were one of the people who were like chanting whatever silly chants you were chanting, like, damn, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. It was cool to see like Biggie like right there and like. Riding a four women's like, but oh yeah, the ATV on, was fun. You're, you're yeah. supposed to represent us as the good, you know. What I mean, the, the good crowds. It's like yeah. Uh, and how about um, of, um, know, before we get to the room, reminds me of the GCW thing. Like oh yeah, yeah. I, I, there's there's got to be a point to like you know heckling and like throwing fucking full beers. At yeah, like metal pails um, and shit like. I understand, like, that happened in NWO, but, like, as somebody yeah. who's a performer yourself, like, there, there's a line, right? I mean, you, you, can't, right. you can't do that. I mean, no, no. No, hit you, somebody uh, you in the head ever, with a full beard. Yeah. You ever hit me with something at a show, like, so help me God. <laughs> like, do not throw shit at me. Like, you can boo me. You can, don't throw, don't, you know, don't, just yeah. don't be a dick. Not, um, to, not to put him know. out there, but I seen Furious at one point. He'd gotten hit in the, uh, the junk with a, a streamer and he, he yeah I, I he had pushed a, a guy the guy that did that and you know at that point he probably deserved it like he he did deserve it like yeah. him and he you hit him right in the in the junk with it like you, that that's gonna piss somebody off the worst I've had somebody spit at me one time but it missed so oh, you know good. yeah not great they shouldn't have spit at me but it missed so you know you guys them. got some uh, <laughs> some Riley fans up there at the Eagles Nest. The the one lady uh, with the cane. I know that she had gotten squid the one time. Oh, she busted him open. She got me one time in in the elbow, oh and I walk, 
Yeah, and it, she nailed me hard, and I walked through the curtain, and I think the entire building just heard me yell the F word because, like, I walked through <laughs> the curtain. Oh, my God. I screamed it out, and then I kicked the wall because, like, oh, it hurt. Um, you know? Shit. Um, and um, I guess back to SmackDown. Before we get to the main event, I just want to talk really quick about that Johnny Knoxville segment with yeah. uh, Sammy Green. Um, first off, Johnny Knoxville is over no matter where they go. Those people, the crowd loves him. He gets a Absolutely. huge reaction. And, um, you know, him and Sammy, that was nice back and forth. I like, though, because Sammy, like, when he did the first Tuluva kick, he didn't quite get all of it. So then yeah. he did a second one to Johnny and um, right in the face, like, full yeah, blown. Like full bore, right? Like, oh, right here. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that match at Mania. I think, like, I it's am, obviously it's not going to be, like, a technical, like, thing, but it's going to be fun. And I think, um, you know, Knoxville – is super popular. I love Johnny Knoxville. So yeah. like, uh, and if you think about it, Knoxville is not somebody who they just, you know, just because he has a movie, like Johnny yeah. Knoxville has been on WWE programming for years, like in the crowd yeah. on the show, like Pontius and, uh, you know, Steve-O with the Umaga stuff. I, I honestly yeah. really like to see them as DLC and Johnny too. I, I yeah, imagine they could put the whole freaking jackass crew in at this point. Like if I mean, put MDK in, so. I would say Johnny Knoxville, just really quick with the game, is probably a definite lock. I would say we'll see him. Yeah, in that I would imagine that would be so cool, dude. And yeah. um, I think with SmackDown, was there one more match? I don't even remember. There, I know was, there was one was... more with Sasha Banks defeating Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, this was a. This was um, I don't know. Yeah. The match was good, but I'm not thrilled that they brought Shotzi had been banished from TV. I know she had some personal stuff, like. Yeah, and it's I think it to have her, her, come her back. father passed away. Yeah, her father did pass away, and um, she came back to just kind of lose to. I don't know. It just it left a bad taste in my mouth. It could have been done. It could have yeah. been done better. You know, the match For itself sure. was great. Though. Like, yeah, talented women, great match, but just I don't know the angle, the whole, all of it could have been done. It's just not there. Yeah, didn't click with me. There. Yeah, all in all, that little SmackDown was enough. It was a good show. But yeah, yeah was, that main event wasn't the best. Excuse no. me, by any means. No, but, uh, but, I mean, but yeah, it was. It's fine. SmackDown is overall SmackDown's pretty good, but it has weeks yeah. like this. It just feels like filler, and it's just the show to air a show. Right, like. right. So we and, got two um, more here. Two more. We got Rampage. Um, open that one up. Sammy Guevara did defeat um El Idolo. This was an up. Sammy Guevara's just been killing it with that title. Like he's been showing yeah. like what to do with that TNT title. Um Wardlow defeats Nick Camarado. This one this one was a down for me. Um I know they're going somewhere like he's he's def Wardlow's definitely gonna turn on Team MJF at some point in time. Oh, absolutely. Pinnacle. But um I just uh, I don't know. He hit he hit him right in the hand with the, the steel chair and it was he's just like huffed and puffed about it, but he didn't. I thought yeah. he'd like kind of a tease an attack at some point, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. But um, I digress. This next one was the Serena Deeb challenge, the five minute challenge. She defeated uh, Kayla Sparks. Yeah, that was Kayla Sparks. Um, I think it was her who was um on um SmackDown. Sm she SmackDown. Got, yeah, she got kissed by a uh, Oh yeah. Him. Yep. Uh, so she, had pulled, uh, she had pulled the Rick Rude. Rick Rude. Yeah. Good for her. Get that. Get yeah, that, cool like, shit. You know, get that screen time and get that, you know, get that get money. Get them. Go, get, yeah. Get, get both of them to fight yeah. for you. Yep. You go, Kayla. Just like Roxy. I, just like Roxy. I, I'm glad that she's signed with the WWE, too. That's awesome. I think yeah, she's going to be doing great. On 2.0. Absolutely, and um, the main the main match was Orange Cassidy and defeating Anthony Bowens. This was a down for me because I I did want to see Anthony Bowens in the face of the Revolution match, um, but it's gonna be cool to see Orange Cassidy in a ladder match. But yeah, it'll all, be fun. Yeah, all in all, I think this was my first Rampage down. It wasn't nothing really spectacular. Um, the Sammy Guevara match was really good, but other than that, it was, you know, standard affair, standard. Um, just didn't hit right this week for some reason, but 
Yeah, to uh, wrap things up here, let's talk about NXT Level Up. Um, yes. We uh we opened it with uh, James Drake defeating Zion Quinn. This was a pretty good one, and I really see that yeah. them that they're going to do something here with Zion moving forward too. Yeah, this was hey, uh, hey. this was enough. Up for me. I um I like Zion Quinn. I think I mean he's super talented. Obviously the Grizzled Young Vets are they're great. Um, you know, they've been around for a bit and they uh Yes, yes. They can go on the ring. Um and I think this was fun and this could set up for a a fun feud. I could see them pairing Zion up with somebody and we can get some pretty good tag matches out of this. Yeah. Uh, I mean Zion is relatively new as far as like NXT goes, but I mean, he's got potential there. He looks good. His power yes, moves for sure. look really good. He, um, he's been using the jackhammer as a finisher, which has been yeah, pretty Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, I liked it overall. Thumbs up on this one. Yeah, for sure. For me too. And, uh, the next one was Saray defeating Electra Lopez. No, Electra Lopez, Lopez defeated Saray. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I did, uh, mess that one up. So, did you watch? This, I apologize. Did you watch this match? I did watch this one. I, did the screen keep going black for you, or was that like a Hulu thing? The screen kept flashing black, so there were parts of this match I couldn't figure out. If I it think was it was. Video. Yeah, that there there was some times that were it was all funky. I yeah, don't know if it was the the master file or what the hell was going on. If it was the file or somebody had a wardrobe issue or what? I mean, overall, the it could have been. Was, yeah, that very well could have been. That makes sense I'm, now that you say it. I'm sorry, uh, you know, the match was like, it had that issues, and it, it, I wish it could have got a little more time, but, I mean, it was, yes. you know. It was good it was for what it was. was, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Electra's the, the, coming into her own. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I could definitely see her on uh, NXT. Yeah. Point of going up forward. Um, the next one was this really cool. Gacy and Harlan defeating Jacket Time, and that's uh, Ikemenzaro, Duro, and um, Kushida. And for me, it was uh, just yeah. really, it was really special to see uh, Gacy and um, Kushida in the ring. That Same. Was cool. um, big ups on this one, Harlan. Uh, I think we, we touched on it last week. I think unlimited potential on his yes. part. Yes. Like, um, he as you know talk to my significant other before like i love the gimmick with gacy and harland because it reminds me it's basically like you take a little bit of bray wyatt a little bit of dario cueto with matanza from lucha underground and then you got a bit like of like the kind of like woke stuff that they work in and it's like it's a lot of things mashed together and yeah gacy totally (laughs) reminds me of kevin owens beginning nxt run uh if i had to give um, you know, pick really quick match of the week. That one I enjoyed. It's worth watching just for Koshida and, like you said, Gacy kind of doing stuff together. Check it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, another fun episode of this, and um, like I said, they're very bite sized, like just like NXT, just like Rampage. You know what I mean? Yep. The one hour thing. So definitely worth watching. They're very bite sized. Yeah. So, um, we're we're at an hour here, so uh, I'm yep. gonna. I'm going to call that an episode and I'm going to say um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any uh, promotions, I would just say um, uh, this week I watched the, I didn't get to watch uh, both nights of GCW. Um, we spoke a little bit about crowds irritating. Like in the first night, like seemed like Janela got hit in the face with like a full beer and Ooh. he kind of went ape shit on the crowd. Like I would too, like it hit me in the face with yeah. a full beer. There's a, there, like I said, there's a, there's gotta be a line. Right. Like I understand back in the day, like ECW, they they piled the ring with chairs and shit like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like that. Yeah, yeah. It feels like there's a line. You don't hit a man. Like you guys no. realize, like the thing, right? You 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 know the thing. Like you're gonna hit a man in the face with a full beer. But anyways, I digress. Um, I had good time on the Smart Mark Alley discussion group watching night two. Uh, Tony Deppelin wrestled uh, Thunder Rosa. Oh, nice. That was really. Oh my God. That. Might have been one of the best intergender matches I've ever seen. It was yeah, that, it was that good. It was that, that sounds good. like that would be, be awesome. Yeah. Stefan's, Stefan's, Stefan's a good dude. That sounds yeah. like that'd be a good match. Alex Zane uh, stepped foot into the death match. Um, the death match, uh, ma- you know, uh, the yeah. whatever you want to call it. And yeah, he uh, he he's a hurting unit. He has a uh, fractured globe Ooh. in his eye. 
and um, he he's uh, his arm his uh, elbow. I I I knew that he went for like a double stomp off of the top rope, like into a glass pane. <sighs> he just he literally ate the entire glass pane. And you know I love death mats. Don't get me wrong, but like during the pandemic area era, it was like binging the Saul franchise back to back <laughs> every day, like. Okay, I, I I'm fine. I just you know I mean I don't want to see any more human beings get mutilated. You know, like I've I'm not I'm not a big death match person, but that's just my like it's my personal. It's kind of like you know, right. like I like right. you like strawberry ice cream. You might like vanilla. It's just I'm not big Absolutely. on death match, but you know, um, those guys who do it, like you know. All the power to them, man. Like, yeah, you more have, power to you, absolutely. You got balls to do that stuff. So, like, yeah, you got guts to those steel, guys. Like, balls of steel. Yeah. So, yeah, but, um, man, like I said, he he stepped into that realm. I don't know if it's going to be a one and done thing, like like Zach Wentz. Um, he did that. He did a you know a one time thing, and he did a really good job too. But you know what I mean? It's yeah. It, it's a mentally and physically taxing thing like i couldn't imagine doing it myself no it's, it's it takes a lot it is but um so yeah do you have anything to promote this week and um I, um right now let me check the calendar the only thing i have to promote right now is march 12th in altoona pennsylvania i will be at eclipse with kit ah, Rock. Be eyes of march there. yeah eyes i'll be heading march. back yeah. uh i I haven't been to Eclipse in uh, probably since the end of like last year. So it'll be fun. Kids going up against Matt Turner and Squid Sterling in a triple threat. Ooh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't um, know. I might, I might be at that one. Um, yeah, if you're, you're there, I'll, I'll see you live. Otherwise, yeah. uh, they do, they, you know, those matches tend to make their way to YouTube with Eclipse. So right, right. I would advise people to check them out. And uh, otherwise, just, you know, all my social media uh the sean calvin give me a follow and um yeah absolutely go ahead and follow him and yeah. check out the backbreaker school too yeah the backbreakers, uh, Back Academy Breakers. And backbreakers just in general yep. just in backbreakers some awesome stuff. Training, tra- uh, at backbreakers training center on instagram and at backbreakers tc on twitter and facebook is i believe backbreakers training center uh just search it or backbreakers entertainment there's two pages in a Give When's the next fall. live one for them guys? Uh, sometime in the spring right now. Uh, we took a little bit of a break just with the snow and the you know the yeah. shitty weather. To try to... It seems like everybody did. True too. Like you, tr- this is the point in time where true usually hibernates yeah. from like November to like April. Or it, yeah, our schedule right around now, but our schedule is kind of synced up this year. True and backbreakers. Like we both took cool, breaks cool. at the same time, but it's again, I love you know, it happens anyone... that way, so, so. yeah. Everyone watching this, we live in northeastern PA, and it's perpetual snow and ice and cold yeah. weather. So you know, take a break. Sucky stuff, yeah. But, but you know, we're supposed to be. Yeah, we're supposed to get it, but thank God we didn't get as much as we they were saying. But, but yeah, man, right. that's that's the Duke's dive. Uh, I've been the Duke, and this I am Cobra, coach. and yeah. I will see you guys we'll next, see time. next time. We'll yeah. see you next time. Thanks for watching.